Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs at Dr. Contrast Live. I just uh, thought I'd take a moment here and uh, just a bit of a brief explanation before I start uh, here today. I really regret uh, not being able to go live last uh, Thursday. My wife had a series of, uh, of appointments she had to take care of, and I had to make sure that I was part of that process. So um, uh, my apologies for not being part of the process uh, last uh, Thursday. But again, we're here today, and I'm really glad to be back uh, live streaming. And I think it'll be interesting today. I thought we'd kind of... Uh, look into some uh, architectural project studies, and I think uh, in this case, uh, you'll notice I've got a little bit of thumbnail sketch here started, and uh, prior to going into showing you what the project was all about, this, this is a piece I did uh, some time ago for a high school system looking at a whole new campus. I thought I'd bring that along and let you see the development of how that whole thing came together uh, from the actual conception of us getting the uh, uh, architectural record drawings and then did some conceptual work. And then, hey, Shadow, how are you, man? Good to have you on board, doctor. It's good to be. Uh, it's nice to see you on. A bit of a different day for you, but I'm glad you're back with us. So thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, great to uh, have you on board. Uh, excellent. Uh, really appreciate it, uh, Shadow. You've done some great work for me, and I uh, cannot uh, thank you enough for the um, absolute um, um, association with a real pro. Thanks very much, Shadow. Good to have you on board. But again, back to back to the premise. I thought, you know, before I go into anything as far as what the project might have entailed, or what you show you some of the sketches, I think there's a little clue here. I think it'd be interesting to kind of start with for this whole architectural project studies and going back to the concept base. Um, and this might be a bit of an overview, but for some of you who are working in architectural systems, I think it's really interesting that uh, to bring uh, several points of interest together here. In the architectural world, which is one of my fascinating subject matters, I mean, I'm really um, I'm amazed at uh, how much I really enjoy doing architectural work for clients, uh, whether it's a big or small, residential, corporate, whatever it might be in the past. It's really been a lot of fun to deal with a whole different science. And as I said before in some earlier streams, the technology base of the architectural systems, materials, fabrication systems, and, and what the capabilities are, are just absolutely beyond this world. They're really, really, truly infinite. But I'm going to take it back a bit here for just a moment and uh, bring into, a, uh, into light here, into Forefront, a name that uh, maybe you're not familiar with, but I think um, maybe hopefully you should be. And his name was Marco Nabili. Marco Nobili was my drawing and rendering instructor back at the Center for Creative Studies in Architectural Rendering Systems. Now, it seems like a very common Italian name. He was a very, very suave Italian uh, uh, gentleman, uh, extremely incredible acclaim, very well-founded, extremely uh, uh, talented and prolific individual. But his claim to fame, but his, he was a chief, uh, chief architect for uh, none other than uh, Prince René of Monaco. Uh, most of the things he did with that the principality were his uh, tasking. Um, phenomenal talented individual, great model builder, extremely uh, lucid individual. But I think he, one of the things that I really respected about his whole program and the teaching process that I had for all four years at CCS was the, the idea of let being able to see a, an elevation or a plan drawing or whatever it might be and turn into a platform and develop basic shapes and architecture and begin to move those shapes around and manipulate them and, and massage them into newness and certain uh, um, uh, for lack of another ter better term here, um, platform studies or building architectural studies or modules that could begin to develop a whole new uh, uh, precept of thinking. So I'm going to start here with a little show you some of these exercises he showed us. If you take a basic elevation like this, for example, we don't know what the circumstance is. How deep is it? How tall is it? Give it a sense of scale. But he always thought in terms of, of going into a, 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 no matter what the project or subject matter was, get that elevation down. Begin to look at the drawing from the point of view of just a very simple, no perspective perspective involved that what are the what are the what are the modules telling you what are the what are the building blocks telling you about this whole process here then he'd take that whole idea and begin to move into uh he would show a demonstration for example how to take that elevation into a plan form or into a perspective whether it's a low eye level or high level or an overview or a bird's eye view um, just really gifted at doing this and his whole premise was simply this develop the platform first now i'm going to show you what i mean by that what he meant by that is if you look at this upper elevation this real quick little study here um this is all conceptual by the way it's not the physical world yet but it's just conceptual trying to get the principle across how to see certain things how to develop certain things when you begin to move an architectural processing and then getting into newness and making sure that the that the, the the facilitation is accurate from the elevation that you're seeing so uh, what he would do is take this and notice this elevation from here to here is a certain span but there's a fracture point right here, and it's, it's actually a shed system. So it's a shed architectural piece and a contemporary piece of architecture. Let's label it as that. So what he would do is begin to take down below here. Now you set up a platform, and I mean perspective grid, for example, vanishing point, vanishing two-point perspective where this thing would open up a little bit. But you develop a platform by doing this. This would represent this area right here. 
would represent the overall span of that elevation up on top. Then you look at the certain fracture point. In other words, the depth fracture point was this one right here. So you lay that in there and you do that. That's my point of departure. Then you looked at the upper and the, the right-hand module and the left-hand module of the shed system itself and begin to move into this. Now we take that first angle and begin to move this whole process. And by doing the following, you come up to this. Then you kind of marry that with this. Come off of that basic platform and then pick up that same perspective line. Notice it extend that a little bit because that's what the form is doing and overhang there's my overhang right there that comes right back down notice there's an angle of return here so if we went right there you can actually see this you'd cut that back right away you've got that that left hand module kind of blocked in in terms of what the scale is doing now to go to the right hand side same thing here's my fracture point here which is right here take that same elevation it's about the same slope bring it right up bring it right up Notice there's a bit of an overhang on it again. And again, just come right back to almost square. Look at how you begin to build that module based on the uniqueness of getting that elevation down and using, hey, Victoria, how are you? Good to have you on board, man. Just got to start a little explanation here on some architectural stuff. And if you missed a little bit of it, um, um, this this is kind of an explanation about, I'm going to show you eventually a project I worked on in, the, in a school system that was really interesting. It looks like American Embassy. And, uh, but yeah, <laughs> well, I hope that would be kind of cool. But um, I started, the, before I get in and show you the project that I'm working, I had worked on, I'm going to describe it a little bit. Um, and I saw that, on, uh, yeah, I saw that, but now, now, now that, not that I know. Hey, that's interesting. Um, but I think there's an individual in my, my career at, at school, at CCS, was an absolute brilliant technician. His name is Marco Nobili, uh, very well-established Italian architect, uh, incredible international fame. Uh, and he was my instructor at uh, CCS for all four years. And the great thing about Marco was that um, his claim to fame was he did all the work under the uh, the surname of, of the house of uh, Garibaldi, which is Monaco, Prince Ernier of Monaco. Phenomenal, phenomenal talent, uh, pretty cool. So. What he, what he taught us to see in architectural systems, instead of going to a, a guessing up at the architecture or the process or building would look like or structure would become or look like, he broke it down in elevations and plan forms and platforms that begin to see how things work. So I did just before I show you the project, I thought that was interesting to go back and show us, show you all, if you're listening and attending here, what that meant. Here's an elevation study, just a, just a conceptual piece. But he, but he break that down into, okay, now you've got the elevation. See what the modules are doing. One to two. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different modules here. Break it down into a very simplest format. And then notice there's a fracture point here. So what he would teach us is see the module, then begin to put a platform in place. And what I've done here is this line underneath here it represents the perspective and platform of that span from there to there. That's all it is, just a flat, flat surface. And he told us, look at the fracture point. There's one here and here. So let's get that, that left-hand module in by coming off that plan form and up an angle. Notice the fracture there, bring it back, right back down the ground line, which is right there. Same with this. There's a fracture point here. Now it begins up at the same slope. Bring that up, bring that up. And then again, notice the overhang to here, bring it back. And then notice it's almost vertical, right? Where we've got here. So you bring that down to vertical. And then all of a sudden, look at that. You've got it. That's interesting how that all comes together. Now, notice there's another fracture point here. So you end it there. Now, does that go through? I don't know. We're going to find out in a moment. Look at how simple that becomes in terms of breaking things down into modular components that begin a truthful story in architectural studies. And let me, let me fast forward a little bit here. When I work with architectural firms and have worked with them in the past, one of the most dreadful things you can do is come in and say, well, I think this is okay. Um, gee, I hope it's right. You better not even begin to state that. You're dead. What you want to walk into an architect, look at developers who've got people, investors and lined up to get this building done. They're looking for truth and wholesomeness in your conversation with, with what they see, which is well showing a moment with the school project that worked out. Um, so let's go back to this drawing just to give me a little bit of a little bit of history on how it all comes together. Now that you have that, I can start to what is this guy doing? Is that an element plane? Well, now notice this a little side button. Now that barrier comes off about halfway down here, so that comes out here. I'm going to work in this little guy right here. That comes out and it stays just beyond that shed. So I'm going to have to cheat the paper here just a bit. It comes out, comes out to ground line. And there's my, now is that a little walkway? Let's, let's call it that. Let's call it a little walkway. So let's put a little bit of substance on this roof here. So there we are. That's that piece right there. Now, how am I going to, now what is this guy doing? Is that, does that form come off of this line here? If I bring this in, is this like a tower that comes off? Let's say it's a tower that comes off that shape. Let's do this in perspective. Look at the width. Let's look at that in perspective. Let's bring that up. And let's do this. Look at the angle. Again, it's, we're going to see it in perspective a little bit. It's going to kind of interfere. Hey, Demetrius, how are you? 
uh, looking good, man. Uh, is on is online as well. Super, very cool. So let's get that point, which is now here, and that point, which is here, and put the angle in place. Now, what does that do? Does that come off the building? Does it come off like so? Is it is it have some substance? If it does, let's just drive it back in space. Let's give it some real guts. Let's say this comes in and does this, and wraps over the top of that surface and does that. Look how that begins to alter exactly what that shape is doing. And you've got it right there and seeing how to begin to modulate these things and how to visualize it in your mind's eye. And I think one of the things, let me go back just for a moment here too. One of the most magnificent things he taught us was to be almost th three-dimensional in the third dimension with our sight pattern. When you see this, you automatically see space. You see infinite space. He was a genius at that. And he taught us how to take basic forms and shapes and begin to manipulate them in the third dimension so we can kind of transfer them on paper successfully. So let me go ahead here just for a moment. Let's let's break this thing down. Now that we have this and we have this, a little bit of support count. Let's do the same thing at this end. Let's make that a solid piece. Let's drop that down, put this back in perspective. Now let's begin to move into this thing. Why don't we do this? Let's break this down, break this down, and break that down. We're going to drop into this guy. Basic components, draw through it. Draw through it, draw through it. And we're going to miss a little bit of the angle back here because it gets pretty shallow. Let's go back in and say this. Let's go up and break this shape up now. Now that I've got the components in place, look how we can begin to move this shape around and begin to manipulate it to no end. It's just absolutely amazing. Well, I'm at it here. Let's to do this. Let's come back out to this. There's the entryway, let's say, this basic entryway. But in that entryway, there's another element here that we're going to put on the ground plane that has this. And maybe it comes back in and begins to pick up a line here. Now we can put the environment around this thing. Let's so do this. Let's come back out here in perspective again. Notice that's my drive line. Bring this out in perspective and begin to hit that contact point. Draw right through that. That's what I want to shoot for upside down. Hit that same sweep and right, right back into. Now that could be just, that's the forefront. Look at that, how that whole thing comes together so smoothly. Lousy sketch. But the principle I'm trying to get across is, when you're working with a poem such as this, and no matter how simple or complex they are, use that elevation as a as a modular building block. What's its overall plan for? What does it look like in perspective? How do I mean to maneuver this thing? Now let's go back to this. And all these things begin to produce one thing and one thing only. Successful concept illustration work. Let's kind of break the shape down a little bit more. And I'll get out over here. Let's take this down. Let's come right back down to center line. Back to center line. Now let's go back in through here. And again, let's take this guy, break it up again. Does that become a sidewalk? Maybe. Take that through, end it there. This could be a green space of some sort. So you want to come back in and give it a softscape character. Just laying in some shrubbery here, right around that little portion. Go circular first, build the module first in terms of organic shapes. Stop it right there. Look at how all of a sudden that whole thing is starting to take on some really neat personality. It's not a great sketch, but I'm just trying to illustrate what happens when you move into the understanding how to work with the module. Now let's do this. Let's sneak in there. Ah, look at that. That little trick. Well, you just, let me stop for a moment. What I think is really fascinating about this whole creative process is this. You've got a given elevation, you've got a given site plan to work with, you've already developed a third dimensional model in your mind, and you're beginning to translate that on paper. But isn't it fascinating to me, and maybe hopefully to you as well, that what happens once you start this thing, now let's do this. If I, from there, I've, I've opened that whole thing. This is now breaking down. That breaks down. But in addition to that, it's got a pillar to it, pillar here and a pillar there, but it goes right through the building. So now, how am I going to show that? Simple, light source. Drop the shadow in. That tells me that recesses. Now let's go back and do this. Now that I've got some flexibility here, I can take this right on through and have a lot of fun with the fact that there's a limit line here. Let's go back and put some pavers in this thing. Take that into that. Maybe this has another location here where it has a certain Maybe it's a fountain of some sort that has an elevation to it. So you build out of that. And then there's a sculptural piece that sits on top of that thing. Just kind of lets you know where the entrance of the building is. It just takes on a whole different... All of a sudden, you've got this personality, uh, concrete, glass, and grass, each providing their own personalities, working in unison, along with the sky and this color variable. It all, yeah, you're right, uh, Victoria. Well stated. It all works together. It all becomes a harmony of just geometric solids and the like. It's terrific to work with. So let me go back into this now for a second. Let's break this shape up just a bit, just to show you all that. Now that I've got the architecture down, 
what, what, what I want to stress here is now that I've gotten the module put together, I can begin to really become lucid with it and create with it and take it from a very simple static platform into a very interesting, intriguing building session. Really neat stuff to work with it. Now let's do this. Let's have fun with this upper piece. We won't see this side, but let's do this. Let's break this down. This is all glass. That becomes a glass pan. Look at all of a sudden. It, 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 to me, it's fascinating. Sorry, I, I hate to be redundant, but it's just fascinating. Now, let's go back and step this down a little bit, step it in, and step that a little bit right down to this roof line. Do the same thing here. There it is. There it is. That becomes glass. Now we break this up. Now, all of a sudden, personality, character, beginning to reveal about this building. Let's go back a little further here. Take this side, run that through. Let's take this and be a little sneaky, just drop this in. Maybe there's a recess in here. Let's get that same shadow to work. And again, glass, find the center, break it up, break it up. And again, split me, this is a split, typical split. I mean, look at, from that simple, banded elevation with two, five, maybe six modules being involved in it, you begin to create this whole unit inside this thing. It's just absolutely amazing. So let's go back in and break this up. Let's have a little fun with this thing. Let's go back in, take that line right through. Let's do the same thing with this. Maybe that now does the same thing. It steps back just a bit. And does that. Now you have this. Same thing. Shadow drop. And it's getting a recess. Into this. Into this. Into this. And man, right away. I mean, that thing has got so much personality now. It's just taking it away from being a very static set of modules or geometric shapes into a very, hopefully, an interesting romantic piece of architecture that, that tells a story. Let's go back to this side. Just for a moment. Let's take that right through. Let's put that little bit of a break in here. And let's let this become, again, take that glass line through, take that glass line through, and just enough partition right there to give us a little bit of glass on the far end of the building. So I, I think it's it's coming together here in terms of how dramatic this whole process of beginning to think through the process and begin to develop shape and create the third dimension from a very simple elevation with no perspective whatsoever. And as I said earlier on in the stream, I think a really important thing to remember about this entire process is simply this that when you see an elevation like this, well, I, let, me put, let me put another context here. I've been trained to think in terms of when I see an elevation or a plan view, right away I'm beginning to develop that three-dimensional, that third-dimensional vision of what this thing might look like. And once I see that, I begin to break it down into modules. What are the proportions? What are the modules? How many units are in there? How do I build this? What's the scale? What's the elevation size and all this stuff? So let's go back in here for a moment. I'll just kind of wrap this sketch up. And thank you for the patience of the banter here. Let's put a little structure in the surface here. Let's come back in, put a little bit of this into it. Let's band that down. Let's do the same thing out here. Maybe this has a little bit of a different rhythm. One, two, three. We come back in and begin to put something here, here, and here. Let's bring this up and just maybe it curls back just enough because there's a little bit of a radius right here. That's that's a little bit of a promenade here. Now, because of the light source, we'll have a little bit of this in shadow and again this in shadow the overhang and again same thing here on the ground plane there it is up the center line through it's got to put a little bit of texture in this thing Again here. Oh. 
What I think is also intriguing about the perspective process is this, that when you begin to understand the, and develop the, the process of getting these monitors to work and, and transferring the elevation into a perspective platform, what amazes me is how light source will really begin to develop and embellish what you're seeing. So the, all of this, so you're right, Victor, that's a great comment you made here about concrete, glass, and glass, each providing their own, each has its own personality. But also, light is, is the one element there that you might want to add, Victor, that light, along with the sky and its color variables, it all pulls together. And I think that's a great way to summarize this whole thing. It all comes together based on these elements that we can control once we understand them once you move into it. And I think that's just an incredible, great observation, uh, uh, Victoria. Thank you. Uh, you helped this, this is great, take my confusion right out of it. <laughs> Shadow for sure. Yeah, incredible. That, that whole contrast phenomenon, dark against light. It's the old Da Vinci process. And again, the Rembrandt process, darkest darks next to lightest lights. Uh, interesting. So who? <laughs> uh, that would be Rembrandt or Da Vinci, one of the two. Yeah, very cool. So here we are, gang. Let's go back in there and just kind of pick up some pieces as we go here. Let's kind of just band this out for what it's worth. We're going to create some texture in this thing. And again, over here, I want to take this piece and give a little bit more, a little more character to it, kind of round that in. Take that through. And again, so interesting. And then here's, here's Causeway here, into the roundabout, into the entrance way. And then last but not least, let's give a little bit of presence here. We'll come back in behind this thing. Let's just give it a, a little bit of this. And right away, you've got a very simple pen study that tells a story to a developer or an architect that I work with all the time. And I'm amazed, I should say this, I say this respectfully, so please don't misunderstand the context. A lot of the architects and individuals and the, and the developers and builders I work with, and, and currently and hopefully I still work with, um, they're always, they're not really tuned into what the whole concept might look like, or what the what the, what the elevation drawings, the plan view drawings, or the detail drawings are telling them. Um, I'll tell you a story at some point in time in the future about working with uh, Frank Gehry um, at the law building up in Cleveland. It was um, really astounding, and uh, I won't take the time now to tell you the story, but um, it's so typical of how these guys think. Um, so, uh, but 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 what's what, all the more reason, for example, when you put together these sketches to be very meticulous about what you see, how you present it, and and I'll tell you the best presentation that I've ever made has been silent. And I'm going to say that again: the best presentation. I have ever made and we will all learn to make is silent let your work do your speaking for you that's what the whole thing is all about it comes down to that that your spirit you should not be in a case of trying to justify or defend what you see if you if you're right you're right if you're wrong guess what you're wrong you can't misspell it so here we are um there it is just a nice little dissertation on um, what happens when you begin to get into these architectural systems, whether they're very complicated or very simple? Um, three things to learn from it, hopefully, from my point of view. Uh, what I've learned from it, anyway, let's put it this way. Simply this. Number one, when you see an elevation, break it down into modules. What are the contents? How many pieces are there? Give it a sense of scale and begin to imagineer what it is in your mind's eye in the third dimension. Take the elevation with no perspective, create in your mind the elevation into a third dimension, and then begin to put it into a platform where you begin to use contact points. For example, this one became a, a real station point for that fracture break right there. And then all of a sudden there and there, right hand, left hand, and it became a fracture break to teach us and to help us guide the form. There's a simple little sketch to get it done there. So I hope that helped at all. I wanted to start this program today, the stream today, without going right, jumping in and saying, well, here's a project that worked on. I think it might be helpful um, to kind of detail a little bit and show you how this whole thing came about. So the sketches I'm going to show you now, uh, let me just kind of switch gears here for a moment. Uh, unless you have any questions, uh, uh, Victoria, Shadow, uh, Demetrius, any questions at all or any opinions? Uh, before I move on here, I really appreciate your uh, being involved in the process of our game. Experiment, that's the worst that happens. You fail. You never truly fail. You learn. Yeah, that's exactly right, Victoria. You always learn. No doubt about it. 
uh, super stuff. Uh, very helpful, Victor. I'm, I'm so pleased you're on board today. I hope you're doing well. It's always fun to have you on board because you kind of fire darts at it. And that's that's what it's all about. It's neat stuff. The same with you, Shadow. So, Demetrius, how are you doing? Good? Is this making sense for you? I mean, I went through it very quickly here, but I think uh, when I go through this whole uh, little um, dissertation on the project I'm going to show you, I'll repeat some of the things we've done here throughout the course of the afternoon here. So, um, here's a, there's, a little, there's an intro. This is how it all begins. So, let's kind of switch gears here and we'll give this a show you some physical sketches here this was done uh, for a, a high school program that was interested in looking at a whole new way would you add a shadow to the left side uh no i would not uh, uh you're talking about let me move this out of the way here for a moment you're talking about this left side over on the left hand side over here um under you're talking about underneath the canopy are, are you saying this for example you know that down I would take it that far, Demetrius, if that helps to answer your question. Yeah, I would, I'd move that out of the way. There you go. That helps. Thank you very much. Um, but I, I thought you were meaning, for example, outside the envelope of the architecture. I wouldn't put the shadow on the ground. I'd, I'd let some of the color and some of the fabrication work take care of that as well. So, hey, very good. Uh, good insight, uh, Demetrius. Thanks for bringing that up. So let's go back to this program here. And I'll just be really quick and uh, run through this, not to bore you to death. Um, but it came about um, several years ago, um, not quite that much, about maybe two or three years ago. I was approached by a good friend to say, hey, we're going to do an expansion program with this high school. We'd love to have you help us uh, provide some conceptual work on um, what we want to do with this thing. And we're not quite sure whether it's going to be a, just a face up of the building or a certain, certain uh, modular change or a whole new campus we want to add on either behind the building or to the right or left. So I'm going to walk you through some sketches here that I put together. Uh, this is just a portion of the sketches. I just selected some of them out for our conversation today. So you can look at it and see what it might be all about. This is a primary entrance thing that was really concerning them. Um, there's a lot of real estate out front, all the way around the building. There's some additional campuses behind it, but a lot of space uh, available in the area here. But they really wanted to attack this whole new, very bland, kind of an ineffective, uh, uninviting entryway piece that they wanted to deal with first. And, and then as I go through this, I'll begin to illustrate or highlight as I was all doing the entryway sketches, they said, hey, what if we did, hey, what if we did, and all of a sudden it began to expand, which is what you want to really develop or generate with your client base. It's the, it's the idea of solving one problem, but yet opening up the door for the revelation of other things to be done, uh, which I think is extremely critical because once you start to see this thing unfold, uh, especially in this case, where the, the administrators begin to say, oh, you know, the, the uh, entryway is neat, but it needs to have a building to match it or a certain structure around it to kind of give it the same flavor. So this is where we attacked it first, and I, I'll come back to that in a few moments here. But the entryway was a, a, a two-door system, and they wanted to really open it up to become a little more melodic in terms of being much more inviting. So let's go back. There's the first sketch, a family of sketches that began to develop. Notice, working in the plan view first, looking at this, I mean, we really modified this whole thing. All of this is happening ahead of this line here. This portion here is the actual termination of the actual entryway. So we took the sketches you'll start to see now are ahead of this, moving it out front to give it a whole new presence and uh, so add some more mystery to the actual building process itself. So pardon me as I move these out of the way so we can see them. So um, I started with a plan view study first, just putting together some elements uh, and uh, looking at it. Then I moved that plan view, notice I just, just, I just demonstrated that in the plan view, begin to see the modules going through and begin to create that third dimension and then all of a sudden transfer that from the plan view into a little thumbnail sketch of what it might look like at normal eye level. So that's what this begins to look like as you move through. Notice the shed system coming through here and opening it all up. And um, another variation on the theme, adding some little spine work on top of all that. So I'm taking some liberties from the official uh, official first start at it to really kind of open up some things here. This is all entryway material. So um, bear with me, there's a whole series of pencil sketches here, of pen ballpoint pen sketches. And I love working with ballpoint pen because you can do some neat stuff with tone, quality, line weight, and so forth. And it's a difficult medium. Well, let me rephrase that. Some feel that's a very difficult medium to work with because, oh, once it's done, you can't erase it. That's the magic of it. Um, do not erase it. Let those accents become part of the design process. So here we go. Uh, there's a first sketch here, and my hands are squared away. I'm going to move this, pardon me, move this out of the way. First set of thumbnails, same thing again. Now notice taking that same set and looking at, for example, from there, let's do this, so I can get this to work on the screen. From that plan view study, 
into some little concept sketches and opening it up into perspective. So what does that begin to look like if I change the character a little bit and move it around and modulate it? Now notice, uh, this is again, this is now becomes the entryway, but it's a whole different set of circumstances. So one thing feeds another. As you well know, Victoria, once in uh, Demetrius and Shadow, once you go through one theme, all of a sudden you'll see something and switch it, maybe a full 180 or 200 degrees change or shift, and all of a sudden it opens up a whole new fresh look at what you're trying to achieve. So that was the first one we were done with. Let's get that out of the way. Let's, see, let's put it over here. The second variation on theme, just again, real quick pencil sketches or pen sketches on module changes. Just a little bit of a plan view based on this guy. Do I want that to be very contained? Uh, do I want to actually modulate so where the elevation changes here as it goes up? It kind of this this last piece here might lift a little bit more so than the other two forms around it. And again, an elevation study based on what we're seeing here. So there's another two. Let's go back and get to the end of the third study here. Let's do this. Probably get these organized in the proper mesh. And here we go. Now a little bit of an overhead. Now really changing uh, into a, a different flow. Well, I you taught me that. Turn it on its side, flip it around, and then, yeah, flip it around, and, and all of a sudden it opens up a whole new set of circumstances. And while I'm at it, this sketch here became a product of saying, you know, what if we add a little more drama to, let's do this, let's get them side by side. What if for the school administrator, add a little more drama to this and really change the ar architecture of getting a little bit more of the, um, shall we say, East Coast character to it, um, and uh, some shed systems and some skylight work and, and a lot more illumination into the entryway instead of being so static through the door and into a dark hallway, whatever it might be. Notice how there's a whole variation change on getting this whole thing to open up very flat entryway here, really pulling it all forward. A lot of glass atrium piece on top, even in some of the assembly areas here, glass and, and again, and a little bit of a walkway. And this this would be an interesting little green space outside the actual form itself to kind of uh, allow the students to go in there maybe at lunch break or whatever, but the rest of the building is on this end that I didn't include. So that's another variation on the theme as a result of seeing some things happen. Uh, that are a little bit more intriguing. There's another little elevation where it really begins to open up and add more of a, almost like an East Coast provincial look to it. Um, an almost uh, uh, very barn type or almost old colonial look to it. If I, did, I just kept moving around the whole empire in terms of what if it looks like this? What if it, and that's one of the things that I really love to do when I go through a design process. I don't, I don't fall in love with any little, just change a little line here. And it's a, I really adjust and really open things up, come back and compress it and expand it and then compress it for the benefit of um, seeing some things that might change here. This is the elevation, or probably plan view of what this might look like. And put a little bit of scale to it with people, and again, in multiple buildings behind it. Again, variation in theme, all about variation in theme, giving your client a lot to work with and a lot to see in terms of developing the shapes and surfaces you're working with. So again, let's go back into this next one. Was a little bit more of a thumbnail. Go back to let's, let's go back to this. Once you start to see this for a moment, what I did here was begin to take advantage of that that very static, almost um, uh, public private school look to it. And, oops, let me move this out of the way so it's kind of, so we see them here a little bit better. There we are. Uh, that public private school look to it, for example, into more of a contemporary, very avant-garde entryway piece. This here's the entryway, the rest of the building. All of this is happening ahead of that plan view drawing that we were given initially. Uh, by the way, we were given lots of drawings, but they really want to focus on the entryway to begin with. As we go through the process here, you'll see how it all begin to shift and they're doing different building variations that would help them see and justify what they wanted to do. Um, again, a little bit of a again, plan view study, taking that plan form and putting it in perspective. What does it look like when you begin to generate that elevation or that plan view into a perspective study. Really quick, really fast little thumbnail sketches. Uh, while I'm at it here, uh, these, well, these sketches take about maybe, uh, I'd say no more than five to ten minutes piece. I'm just really cranking through them and providing the client base with a lot to think about and a lot to really discuss in terms of which way do we want to take this, uh, this format here. Let's move along here. Go back again. Uh, yeah, let's keep this up. Once, once I came back, um, after completing this one, let's go back to a couple of sketches here. I went back to this basic theme and tried to develop something around this, this cupola piece into much more of a contemporary, kind of flatten it down a little bit, entryway, elevation study to kind of show what that, that bell tower might look like. Um, and another variation on theme here. Oops, sorry, let's get this all lined up. Or is that helping? Better? There you go. Got to make sure I get those sketches lined up. So that was a product of, let's see, where am I here? There, let's get rid of those guys. This is another variation on that same theme, trying to look at different ways of putting in little features like glass, time, uh, a, a clock tower, um, entryway pieces, a lot of paving systems and change of materials on the ground plane to work with it here. Now let's move along here. Next is the 
So again, going back to basic, just uh, looking at the entryway, let's go back to that first sketch again, that for that entry, went right back to the rhythm of, and the, the stead setup of what this, this portion here began to look like. I came right back to it and said, all right, let's slow it all down a little bit, and right back into some basic little studies here for simply the entryway. Uh, maybe it's just a simple adding of a wall, a little bit of glass to it, and then just change the character, and it would look like that perspective would look like this up over the top, more of a bird's eye view. This is what it's going to look like. And then again, back to an elevation. A little different than this one, but again, three different themes on the same basic overall look. Kind of confine that and, and focus in on that basic entryway piece, and that's it. So let's move again here. Now, taking the building into account, maybe we go both ends. Maybe we actually put an entry here, entry here, and a little bit of an administration wing in front of that. This is what that would look like from another perspective coming into the building itself. This it would be more centered and in here, for example, and then we'd actually pull that, this portion here, we actually this upper level on behind it. Um, I go too quickly here, gang, or uh, this pace okay? Is this making sense for us? Hopefully, hopefully. What do you think, Victoria? Good? Uh, again. A lot of variations, a lot of theme, a lot of change, and a lot of thinking process going through the, the, the development here. So I want to slow it all down. Hope I'm not going too quick here to kind of destroy the uh, the the, uh, the pattern here that we're working with as we go through it. So uh, everything good? Super. You always fly through this. But <laughs> I hope it makes sense, uh, Shadow. I just want to make sure that we kind of can communicate the, the principle. The principle behind it all is to take a basic element and begin to magnify it into another atmosphere or another dimension altogether. That doesn't mean you're going to win all the time, but at least you're giving your client a lot of things to think about and a lot of things to really weigh in terms of, oh, we could do this, or we could, we could, we could. That's far more productive. Of, Gee, I don't like that. Gee, you know, how come you did that? Or else complete silence from them. As I said earlier in the stream, one of the, one of the great signatures of, of knowing that you've made a great presentation is your silence. Your work does your speaking for you. That's the key. So let me move along here. Again, another variation on entryway. Another variation again on entryway. How to begin. Look at the plan view. Kind of neat where you've got this translucent glass with these very dark darts come into it with maybe they're illuminated at night or whatever. That might look like that and, and a little bit of perspective. And it also could look like this where it's more of a, a curve to it and a little more graphic fiber optic piece on the inside of that. And then uh, again, different variations on there. Add a little bit of scale and again, into the entry, far more character. Welcome to this place as opposed to, oh geez, I'm entering the building. I don't, like to, don't want to do so. Gives it a lot more personality. So let's move along here. Then let's switch back from, from this. This is an interesting transition here. During the conversation with all the administrators, all of a sudden, um, one individual came up with the idea of saying, you know what, we kind of need to go back to, go back to almost like a Westminster look or a British um, uh, private academy look. And uh, these next family of sketches begin to kind of telegraph that with a typical tower, um, again, uh, with some very simple courtyard pieces around it and different variations on theme, very simplified, low key piece to kind of put it all together. So these next family of sketches, go much more to the very traditional uh, private school, almost European, uh, United Kingdom approach and European approach to uh, academic environments here. Uh, notice here, very simple, straightforward. It's not the entry. This is one of the features of the building that, that we're looking at and putting it all together. So there's one. Then moved into this, putting it in perspective. Notice again, a lot more of a campus piece. Um, the entryway was not being featured here. This again, would, the entry would be the other side of this piece itself. Could be underneath here. And again, an elevation, looking at this wall, so to speak, just changing the speed and the tempo of the sketches to get it all put together. Very quick little rapid sketches based on this Westminster or this, this Abbey look to this uh, um, the school foundation that the one individual and the board member was looking at for us to evaluate. Again, a little thumbnail study here. <clears throat> Very tr uh, traditional piece, uh, the shed roof, in addition to some some Westminster, the tower pieces, etc. And uh, modules uh, for learning modules, again, much more captive. Uh, family of sketches, that's what that was all about. And again, back to more traditional again, a little more double shed where it actually kind of, it, um, it, it really mirrors itself, but it has a bit of a, an interruption here with this. Uh, this could be a clock tower, it could be a bell tower, uh, whatever that need might be. But again, another uh, uh, sufficient to say, Another variation on theme here to kind of give them what they're looking for in terms of the final aspect of what they're, what they're going to develop. So I went from that variation into this, and let's go back and do a little more data. So I turned the corner a little bit on that with this, this UK private school and got back into some really interesting 
um, just elevation studies on um, elevation with a lot more organic look to it. And again, back to shed and, and then again, putting that in perspective just a little bit. Um, and what that might look like for that entryway. And again, this would be another building, for example. Now we're moving into an area here. Uh, pardon me for not injecting this earlier. We were moving into this area now where all of a sudden they began to see that you know, the entryway could, could really be an entry piece or a, or a signature piece for a whole new piece of architecture. There'd be a separate campus in the building. So these studies that you'll see now are beginning to move away from that uh, initial building plan form and look at uh, other facilities on the campus that they could build into. So that's another away from it. Then we went back to traditional again, where it was uh, very interesting how, again, the plan view, a little bit of a perspective study, keeping it very simple, but um, very much straightforward and much more purely academic, far more Frank Lloyd Wright-like, uh, straightforward, low-profile building. Um, and again, uh, entryway, entryway, kind of a little bit of a plan view shift. This perspective kind of reflects what that is doing. And uh, very simple forms that, uh, that put it all together here. So uh, super interesting things. and, and uh, Again, notice the latitude from start to finish as we begin to wind down this thing, how that just moved and morphed from one dimension to another and changed an awful lot, which I think was really to be very intriguing. So there was one study. And again, a little more, a little more again, uh, flamboyant in terms of dual entryway pieces, adding a little administration building up front, looking at elevation of it, a plan view of what happens up front with this boulevard or this entryway here, and making that a little bit more unique in terms of... Uh, Getting back to that sedated, almost um, um, straightforward, uh, contemporary look at, uh, that, that they wanted to go back to uh, from one of the theme studies here. And the last thing we did was something that was pretty close to where it all ended up. It was a combination of a lot of different elements here. And uh, this is, again, uh, this is the entryway piece, um, a new wing added here, another wing element here. And this, this turned out to become one of the, of the mainstays of putting a whole new different uh, campus on, on the site that would, would, would go back to, let me just do this for a moment here. Before I leave here, just for a moment, again, anybody, any questions or concerns so far? Just uh, hopefully clarifying some, some concepts and ideas that we're talking about here as far as this whole idea of architectural project studies. I'm entitled to stream today a project study because, um, and project based because it really was something that I want to start with. How to explain how to start some architectural studies for those who are in architecture, if you have a struggle putting it into to real time or converting the elevation to plan view and vice versa or perspective. Uh, that first piece I did about introducing uh, the modular series and, and thinking in the third dimension hopefully would help you there. Uh, but uh, let me stop for a moment here, and I think it's really unique that uh, putting this stuff into practice over the years for me, uh, my career has been incredibly helpful. Um, I don't stop. I, I never stop. I never hesitate. I just keep going through it all, knowing full well that we're going to hit some and we're going to miss some, and we're not going to win it all the time. But it really makes a huge difference um, to a bunch of Yeah, I, you're right, Shadow. I think I'm, I'm going to go back in, for example, this coming um, uh, Thursday from from the, the architectural side here of project-based materials. I'm going to show you the same thinking process, hopefully, again in some landscape architecture um, uh, that was done very recently as well. It all ties together. It doesn't matter if it's if it's architecture, landscape architecture, product design, um, um, it, it's, it's infinite. You, you use this whole tool all the way through your development process. And I think the more you expand on it, the more you interface with different uh, developments, for example, architecture, product, transportation, um, interior space work it, it all relates and i think it all comes back to good fundamental basic sound thinking and that's what really these sketches are uh demetrius knows this from my classes at the ccad um, drawing to me is a thinking process it's not a visual process it's a verbal process so you begin to think in terms of the verbal side what is it what's its character is it supple is it sheer is it organic is it is it dramatic is it very subtle those things begin to tell you certain things about the actual uh, pieces that we're dealing with and it's a tremendous clue to help build credibility when you put your sketches into action so anybody any comment here in closing here um I'm going to wrap it up here in just a moment, uh, but I really thank you for taking the time to be with me. What do you think, Demetrius? Has it been helpful? Victoria, you still with me? Good stuff, gang. I, mean, I really appreciate the interface here. It's good to have a conversation going on the list like this because it kind of keeps things alive and uh, helps me to kind of focus on what we have to take care of from uh, sketch to sketch and what we want to highlight and what we want to eliminate. So all that to say, gang, really great to have you on board here today. I think it was just uh, terrific uh, uh, to put it all together. Um, and again, I think let's go back to that, that, that sketch I did here. Let's go back to this study just for a moment. Um, and, and let's, let's, let's wrap that school project up. That was it. 
all of that came out of just think of it all of that came out of focusing in on pardon me for a moment here all that came out of that focus area right there the entry was the problem when i was brought on board from the entry we did through a variation of themes hundreds of sketches that, that began to open up and lo and behold when it all ended up it became a whole new campus that they saw the architecture begin to blossom with and they had a bunch of them to work with and while i'm at it um, in closing here with that with this particular project and when all the sketches were done i was really honored to know that all my sketches and some of the final studies that we did for that project went to the architect and the architect got in touch with me and said this is great stuff helping us to see this thing and help us build it. So I joined forces with them for a little bit to kind of do some consulting work with them to clarify the images that they were seeing that the the, uh, the board members uh, finally elected as the final design solution. So with that in thought, let's go back to this one just for a moment. This is where I started. And I want to revent, or just again remind us about how really critical this is. This is how we began the whole process. See the elevation, no perspective, but it also has clues in it. It has modules, has scale, has different block building blocks about how to develop the form. Once you begin to see that, let me just show what I mean by that really quickly here, and we'll wrap it up. Once you see this, let's do this in elevation. Now, once you see this, maybe it's this, then this, then this. Then all of a sudden, that's a very round form that does this. And it's extremely, maybe it's just as simple as that. Maybe this thing comes through and does that. But at the same time, it all leads like so. Now, we have no clue about what that thing is doing, right? But here's the key. Let's go back again. Let's go back and do this. Take this and this. I'm going to develop a platform here. I'm going to just go to ground base. There it is right there. There's my, there's my platform right there. Notice where that thing's sitting. It sits right about here, right? So I'm going to take that whole thing. I'm going to come down now. I'm going to build this thing up. Now, that's a, that's a pivot point right there. From there... Notice how that goes like so. That does this. And then again, we've got that. Let's put this in place here. Let's just build that in. As a, as a, now notice that comes through and then it goes right and then does this. And again, I'm going to run out of space here a little bit. Let's just take that point of reference. Now let's just take this and be a little bolder with it. Maybe that's this. Now it does this. That stands free of that building. Now it comes up. Notice the incline. It's now that. Every one of those things are right there. I developed on the understanding of what circles and perspective do. But it's just phenomenal. Now let's go back and pick up the width here. Here's the width of the building. Let's bring that up. Bring that through and begin to slide that shape right through it. Mirror that form right through there. And I'm going to run out of paper. So pardon me here again. So I'll abbreviate, cheat the system here just a bit to this. Let's go back and get this. Now let's come back to ground. Let's get, this, let's get this line to work. And let's get that line to work. Let's take that through. And notice that had a bit of a reverse to it. That whole thing, that little slope foot comes back and does this. Let's do a little variation on theme here too. Let's come back and go back to normal here. So let's bring that up. Notice how that sits about right there, which is right about there. It's going to come back to here and give me that. Now let's go back in here. Just change the slope of this. Center line. Let's break up the shape. Let's put some glass in this thing. Let's get back to ground base.
a little mistake here, a little accident. Let's make it work for us. Last. I'll stop right there. I mean, look how that pace began. That simple little elevation. Just turn it around a little bit here. Here we are here. Let's go back to this. In the ground base. Picking that same thing and looking at the key points. That point to that point, which gave us that and that. And we began to develop that cylinder off of that shape. This is what Marco Nobili was talking about years ago in my architectural running program. The guy was an absolute genius. He was a visionary. He was a ex great technician and extremely accomplished. I mean, um, he, as I said, uh, was the uh, principal architect. He was Italian-based, born in Milano, and um, Italian-based and became very prominent and uh, extremely famous in his, in his country. And he was contracted by the House of Garibaldi, which is Monaco, Prince Renier, to do all the work on the palace and the things in Monaco are all his architectural work. Phenomenal talent. So, But his whole forte was in closing was simply this. When you begin to see an elevation, think in terms of modules. One, two. One, two. Now open that module up. Pick up target points and begin to see the platform. The platform may do this. So we understand what we're after. Platform meaning this. This is what the thing that from there to there or there is this the platform. It's the perspective key. This is the ground base right here. It's there to there. That's where it all started. And from that, you begin to pick up that whole idea, this whole concept of this platform, build it up from the ground on up. That's the whole idea. It's interesting how it all comes together, how this whole process, if we think in terms of, let, let, me, let me break it down as best I can here. If we think in fundamentals, elevation, platform, key points, module, third dimension, visualize, complete. It all fits together. And I think that's the thing I want to stress here with this uh, this whole process today, uh, entitled the Architectural Project Studies Project Base. How did it start? Here's the story. There we are. Uh, really appreciate the patience here, gang. And uh, 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 very kind of commentary, Shadow. Thank you very much. Um, it's, it's a history side of this whole thing. And I'll say this. Um, I've said this all my days, and Demetrius can back this up. Um, and you as well, uh, Shadow, you as well, all, all of you can really uh, verify this. I am grateful over the course of time for the people I've met along the way who've been in incredibly powerful people in my career. Uh, small as it is, people like Shadow, Demetrius Influence, and Victoria's Commentary, Instructor, Sid Mead, Marco Nabili, Homer Legat, I mean, endless number of individuals that I've just had the pleasure of knowing and working with that are absolutely phenomenal talents. Um, not forgotten that, and I've not forgotten their lesson. And the greatest lesson they taught me was this. Very simply this. I'm not going to take this back, and I mean it with every ounce of my soul that I possess. The greatest lesson I learned was, number one, always respect other people's opinions and points of view. You might not like them. You might not agree with them, but respect them. Because you know what? You don't know it all. You don't have all the expertise. Others might have something that you could benefit from and really build a fire on. So that's what I love. The interface of conflict in terms of, hey, I think it's a, well, I don't know why. So that's, a, to me, the great drama about what the design process does. And it begins to develop your story, and your story gets stronger as a result of being able to take the bullets and the acclaim from people that love you. So all the best, gang. Thanks so much for your time here today. It's been a real, real pleasure. Um, um, I just want to make one last comment here. We're still working on trying to get this store put together. So I keep announcing this every time I'm on a, on a stream about, hey, go to the website and look at Dr. Contrast Apparel. I think we might be coming on board here. We've got we've got the shirts photographed. We're trying to get those loaded in now. We had to change the format on the website. Uh, we're on a number of things. A lot of you're right, Shadow. A lot of different things. So all that's coming, folks. So stay with us and stay stay tuned here today. And if you have any comments, for example, uh, that you'd like to have me work on, please feel free to drop me a note at my uh, email address at. Uh, Jim at drcontrast.com. Love to hear from you. If you have anything you want me to put on or kind of talk about or else illustrate on the on the stream program on Twitch, happy to do it. Yeah, it's terrific to, to have your interface and to help you along the way to help, help you help me a lesson plan. Actually, uh, that's really good to have. And secondly, please uh, visit my website at drcontrast.com. You'll find some neat stuff there. There's a good drawing program. As I said, we're adding that shadow. I just brought it up here on the uh, 
just really interesting. It's been a hectic few months. It's right for you especially. Uh, but we are looking at, um, uh, I appreciate it, Victoria. It's always great to have you on board. Uh, great stuff. Um, I appreciate your input. Uh, great stuff, um, Victoria. Thank you. Wish you and your family all the very best. Um, but uh, visit my website at drcontrast.com and to see what you think in terms of, um, give, me, give me some feedback. What do you think of the website? Uh, what are we doing? What, we, what can we, how can we improve it? I've got a great individual working with me on it. Uh, Shadow's been a big, big force on that, as well as Jimmy Romanowski. Uh, great stuff to work with here, gang. So thank you so much. And I always finish with this, because that's really, to me, the essence of why I'm here. Never forget the dare to remember, the dare to be great, because you are. Thanks very much, gang. Have a great day. We'll see you on Thursday. Thank <clears throat> you.